Welcome back to Cigar Time, your friendly Tuesday night show all about premium cigars. Now, I know you're all looking at us right now and wondering, <laughs> what are those guys been drinking? <laughs> What's well, in those cups? Unfortunately, not What's in nothing. those yeah. cups, anyway? <laughs> I can assure you, we're, uh, we're as uh, jober as a such, so you don't have to worry about it. What anything. language is that? Uh, sober as a judge? What so are you listening to? That's not what you said. That's exactly what I said. I said as a judge. No, you didn't. Your ears are clogged. Okay. Okay. We're very honored and privileged to have as today's sponsor, Leaf by Oscar. And we have the entrepreneur who's behind that brand, uh, which has caught fire in the last couple of years all over the country. Yes, it has. Island Jim Robinson. Literally. Wahoo. <laughs> Wahoo. <laughs> I'm waiting for that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Isn't somebody missing today? Uh, yes. I was going to get into that. No. You may have noticed. Yeah, Scott's not here. Perhaps you may have noticed. <laughs> Scott is in disguise. The lovely Miss T is on assignment in Central America. And visiting. how. Huh? And how. And how. <laughs> Thank God. No, with Lito Don't. and the gang. Uh, she's, she's exploring a cigar factory down there, and when she, on her arrival back, we'll have very interesting comments and films to show that I think you'll find uh, educational and enlightening. Tia in the field. Tia in the field. How long is she there? A year? Uh, no. <laughs> You're just jealous because she has nicer legs. You don't know that. I do know that. No. I've seen you in shorts. So. I do know. Speaking of shorts, uh, yeah, it's why are you here? Isn't it a little cold out there? Are you wearing shorts? No. A little bit. What? Okay. It's not that cold yet. Oh, okay. I thought you meant he was short. It's sweatshirt and shorts weather still. No, it's College not short. Weather. It's vertically challenged. What? Yeah. yeah. Not vertically. Well, Jim, welcome to our show. Yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you for the invite. Oh, yeah. Get our, now, get our customary yeah. Laurel and Hardy handshake. Oh, no, stop you. it. There's not a lot of places that invite me in, so this is an honor. Uh, hey, <laughs> you're welcome here. Come, you come back in a half hour and let us know if you still feel like <laughs> I don't know if I can do it from the side. It's just, it's different. I gotta sit next to him. I don't well, like that. You're, you're now on the left, as yeah. opposed to us on the right. Pigs flying you're, too. You're Scott, down the you're on the left too. That's not usually. Where no. The John's are over here. So, uh, before we uh, get much further along, uh, the Leaf by Oscar is a, is a somewhat unusual cigar because it has this outer wrapper that uh, I won't name names, but uh, some of us on the panel, not me, have tried to smoke through. Nobody uh, told me. Well, Somebody just left it on my desk. Hey, here, try this. So, uh, How many years have you been smoking cigars? Two. Two so, years. So your that. initial <laughs> comment was, Oh, yes. Yeah, that's the ugliest cigar I've ever seen. <laughs> no, no, no. I smoked it. And, they, this, and somebody, the guy who gave it to me, asked me, So what would you think of that cigar? I was like, it was, it was pretty good, but it was awful messy. <laughs> and he's like, well, Did you take the wrapper off? I'm like, What? <laughs> what wrapper? Well, why let's, don't we... Let's uh, be clear what we're talking about here. Yeah. Isn't that gorgeous? Jim, do you want to describe? Yeah, I was going to... Yeah, it's, it's ugly. It's just plain ugly. Uh, I actually rolled these myself about 3 o'clock this morning. I, I can believe drinking. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you were drinking? Yeah. And I was drinking. You, well, you, you, you had some yeah. jet fuel, right? It's the only way it looked that good. Uh, <laughs> we, wrap it in, we wrap it in a tobacco wrapper instead of cellophane to help protect it. And we're the only ones in the world right now doing this. Yeah, uh, so it's, and we've been doing this now for a little over two years. Started as just my house cigar. But what it does, uh, even the band is made out of tobacco. We grind up tobacco, and we, make, and we make the paper out of it. Wow. So even the band is tobacco. And it's actually a little factory, paper factory, in our hometown of Danley, where we make our cigar. Honduras. Our Honduras. That's a, it's a single mom's paper factory. So it's a place where the moms can go to work, and they make our paper. Oh, that's cool. And we pay the big, a big 50 cents a piece, a sheet, for this paper. Wow. Um, and out of this paper, we get maybe... 50 bands because the sheets are pretty big. Mm. Uh, but we buy 1,500 sheets of this a week. Wow. So wow. We're, we're going through a lot of this, a lot of this paper. It's a lot of cigars. Can you light your cigar with the with the band? Uh, I know. I never tried it. <laughs> you can be the first. <laughs> I the, I the the so that's the, that's the paper. That's the tobacco that we make the paper. And then the, to open it, you pull back the two pigtails, and you sort of unroll it. You find where the crease is at. And you unroll it, and you have a whole tobacco leaf. You also, some people open it like a party favor. Yeah, I've seen people do it like that. <laughs> I've seen some people, as you, smoke it with it on. But I recommend you take it off. <laughs> take it off. It take smokes it a little better. 
Here. Uh, and other people use this paper for other stuff, but so we need to reuse this? this show. Yeah. So this looks really cool. Very cool. But what we, it does? Uh, can we save the outer wrappers? I and actually store them up need and them sell them for back to you. to be rolled back. Sure, in you can do that. Yeah. I need them for a demonstration. This was I'm perfect. I'm deveining it. But one of the things it does, the the the, paper, the, the, the tobacco, it helps protect the cigar like cellophane. Oh, actually, when you, so you can good. see, this is somewhat pliable. After this has been laying on the table here a few minutes, it'll be all dried and just crumble right up. This still so it acts like a right wet. I don't want to wow. say the brand name, but it acts like a wet pack around every cigar, so it helps keep the cigars fresh. Right. This smells mm -hmm. really good. The other thing it does is when the tobacco is rubbed together, it brings out the shininess of the, it brings out the oils. Oh, it's so, like polishing an apple. So it's like helping the flavor of your cigar there a little bit. It's a beautiful it cigar underneath. Oh my God, yeah. It's gorgeous. Yeah, in, in case you thought that it looked funny with the wrapper on, here it is with the wrapper off. And today it's a we're, beautiful cigar. Today we're smoking the uh, Maduro which all the filler is uh, Honduras, the binder is Honduras, and the wrapper on the Maduro is Nicaragua Jalapa. It's Honduran. Honduran, yeah. yeah. And one, Honduran. As one of our panel members is, is, uh, wrote to say. Who? Jim, you said this used to be a house cigar. <laughs> this started as which my house. Which house? I, people don't know if, if people don't know who you are and where you come from. Uh, I own retail shops in Pittsburgh, uh, Leaf and Bean. Okay. And I originally started this to be my house cigar for Leaf and Bean. Got it. Uh, and that was uh, uh, about two and a half years ago. And then retailers started calling me, asking me if I would wholesale it. Probably about the first 15 times I said no. Uh, then you got religion. Then I got, then I got well, what the hell, if people want to buy this, let me, let me start selling it. So uh, I hired the guy that you guys know, John, yep. uh, who is my rep in the Pennsylvania area. And it was just him and I for probably the first eight months of us doing it. Mm -hmm. So we were only marketing it. We started in the Pennsylvania and New Jersey area for marketing it. And uh, now we're in several other shops with it. You said how many shops are you in now? Over 800. In two wow. years. In two years. That's wow. Remarkable. That's impressive. Whose idea was it to use the uh, the leaf as a cellophane? Uh, that was actually Oscar's idea. Oscar he, Oscar is my partner in, in Honduras. Uh, Oscar used to work for another big company. Uh, he was their quality control manager. And he actually, the person doesn't mind who we say who it is, and it was Rocky Patel. Rocky Patel was, uh, Oscar worked for Rocky Patel. And uh, he was one of his quality control managers. And then when he went out to branch out and start his own factory, I asked him to make his first cigar as my house cigar. And that was the Leaf. Hmm. Interesting. You've done a remarkable job. I mean, yeah. you know, I have a million questions. What's your background? Uh, I, before I got into this. I mean, legal, legal background. Legal background, yeah. <laughs> yeah. A couple of little short stints in jail. No, I'm uh, You're in good company. <laughs> I, I was a. Uh, <laughs> I used to manage Marriott Hotels. I used to manage Marriott Hotels. Oh, okay. Really? Yeah. That was a Marriott. career. Obviously in Hawaii. No, I was all over the state. <laughs> all over the state. And then when I left the hotel business, I wanted something to do that I didn't have to work, so I figured, let me open a cigar shop. That's, that's perfect. We know <laughs> yeah, all about yeah, that. Exactly. We're all retired. That's hardly working. Yeah. That's hardly working at all. You're doing something you enjoy. I enjoy it. I love I've been doing this for a million years, and I love every day yeah. I come to work. It's not Make work. Make your vocation a vacation. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, that's what we do around here. We smoke, we eat, occasionally mm -hmm. have a tooth, and uh, get paid for it. Yeah. Not a, a bad tooth? life. A tooth? You get paid? No, I don't, actually, I don't get paid. I donate all mine so you guys can have more. Did I say that? Yeah. I did say that. John, the record now. When's the more coming? <laughs> <laughs> so, Leaf and Bean, as, as cigar shops, have been in business for quite a while, haven't they? The original Leaf and Bean started about 17 years ago. Yeah. Uh, Greg Thrakeld owns that. Uh, he's pretty well known in the cigar business. Right. Uh, he started it. I used to own a restaurant in short period in between of the Marriott Hotels and the cigar shop, I had a restaurant which was right next to the original Leaf and Bean. But I would go to the Leaf and Bean and do all my paperwork and computer work and order my menus and hang out and smoke cigars. And complained about my employees one day and Greg says, go open a cigar shop. Um, that day I went and found a location for the cigar shop, which is in the Strip District of Pittsburgh. Uh, gave the keys to the ex-wife to the restaurant, says, you now own the restaurant, and I went and opened a cigar shop. Yeah, cool. Nice. Pretty cool. Nice. Two months nice. later I was open. And by the way, if you guys are ever in Pittsburgh, I've been to the shop. If you're if you're ever in Pittsburgh, you got to see it. It is, it is the cool. You've got live entertainment a Every lot Saturday. of times. It's in a, what, an old garage, I guess. Yeah, they used to park dump trucks in the building. Right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and like in the winter, I guess you just have a regular door. But in the summer, it opens the when it's nice out, it opens the garage doors, and it's just 
it's it's cool. It's like it's it's like a certain I restaurant. Can't picture it. Yeah, I've never been there. But I've a been certain restaurant picture. that comes after Thursday on acid. <laughs> <laughs> it's very eclectic. We have motorcycles hanging from the ceiling, tables made out of bathtubs, old phone booths, uh, cold gas pumps. It's very like, no two chairs match. It's I like very the barber. Eclectic. I like the barber chairs and barber chairs. The, the knight, the the armor in the back. So it's sort of like oh. Salvation Army meets a Kia. Pretty much, yeah. And a yeah. coffee bar in it. Well, not a Kia. Uh, uh, more like a Friday's. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I was there on a Saturday right before Easter, and there must have been 50 people wow. in and out, just uh, like hanging out outside. It's really neat. On a Saturday, on a Saturday in nice weather, 150, 200 people, pe 250 people there on a Saturday. Yep. Listening uh, to the music. Cool. <laughs> and we're BYOB, so they bring their own music. Nice, nice, nice. Sounds great. It does. I'm liking the cigar, I know that. Well, why don't we go around the table and get our initial impressions? Want to start here? You can start there. Well, in the way of all true good Maduros, there is a beautiful sweet note yeah. at the beginning yeah. of the cigar. And um, it's got a lot of nice body and a little bit of spice behind that. Got I get the I get the sweet, but I'm not getting, I get, I actually I'm getting a little, on the retrohale, a little bit of spice. Yeah. And as you, as you would expect with a cigar like this, I'm getting a little bit of, I guess, roast coffee for, or, or cocoa, for lack of a better way of describing it. One of those C words. Yes. Coffee, cocoa. So. Coffee, cocoa, yeah. Java. Yeah, I'm Cacao. getting the, I'm getting the spice. Uh, I'm getting the sweetness from the Maduro wrapper. The Maduro wrapper's tremendous. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's wrapper. beautiful. It tastes so good. It's, beautiful It's wrapper. smooth. Um, I'm not getting a coffee taste. I'm getting more of a toasty taste. To it, as opposed to oh, I don't some coffee at all. Breakfast genre. Yeah. <laughs> now you need just some eggs or something like and that. Bacon. And gotta bacon. Have gotta, bacon. Gotta, and scrapple. Bacon. It's gotta bacon have scrapple. flavored cigar. Now you're talking. Yeah. I've been saying that for a year. Bacon Somebody should come out with a bacon flavored cigar. Oh my god. I think it's a good idea. Well, I gotta work with these people. Oh my god. Well. And your initial impressions? My initial impression. Right, I concur with everything that's been said here. I mean, it's got a nice sweet finish. Uh, I get a little bit of pepper on the side of the front of my tongue, and uh, I loved the cigar the first time I smoked it about a year or more ago, and I still love it. And it's just a wonderful cigar. What do you retail for? Eight ninety five. Eight ninety five. Okay. Yeah. Well, there's a there's a six by sixty in the Maduro that's uh, just a dollar more. Yeah, dollar yeah. more. Yeah. And that's 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 fairly new to us, and it's really picking up. Steve. It is. Uh, it's right around the higher end of the sweet spot of pricing, but it. A really premium cigar that's well worth the money, and, and you know, we'll get into events and stuff that we're doing later. Uh, I just this I'd is like to cigar. point out the construction of this cigar is absolutely impeccable. Yeah. Um, it's a very firm cigar, uh -huh. but it draws beautifully. You can see a great burn, terrific ash. Uh, it works. Thank you. We should probably also mention that uh, it not only comes in, we have it also in a Connecticut and a Corojo wrapper. Um, right. It also comes in a Sumatra, which we don't carry. currently have. But currently, we might, we're thinking about yeah, it. Yeah, we're thinking about uh, it. You just don't like anything with an Ecuadorian wrapper on it. That's not true. <laughs> well, the Sumatra is my biggest seller in the self. The self market, they love the Sumatras. Wow. Hmm. That's impressive. You said the Maduro is the best selling in the in, East, right? In the Northeast. Well, the Northeast. The Maduro is the best. The one question I must ask. Some of you at home may have noticed we look a little different today. Uh, I shaved. Well, Scott does. <laughs> Scott does. <laughs> yes, Scott does. <laughs> Paul, Paul shaved. Paul shaved. Well, I shaved too. Paul. So did I. Uh, tell us about the yellow, the yellow glasses, because those of you who are social media savvy, you've seen Jim all over Facebook and other venues, and he's always got these yellow sunglasses on that we're all wearing today. Well, about four years ago, I was in New York City, walking down the sidewalk. It was a bright, sunny day, and you know those guys that walk around with the boards full of sunglasses for mm -hmm. five bucks? Um, I forgot five my bucks. sunglasses. Yeah. You overpaid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I bought five pair, but I got, he gave him a deal oh, you got for a 20. Yeah, I, got, yeah. 20. I got five pair for 20. But I bought like five different colors, and the yellow ones is the ones that stuck. I was actually there for Mark Weisenberg's wedding. Yeah. That was, that was the occasion wow. that I was there for. Y'all know Mark. Oh, yeah. yeah, we know Mark. <laughs> Rosenbagger. Rosenbagger, that's what I call it. But yeah, the, the yellow sunglasses like sort of that. stuck, so now it's just part of my costume. Well, it certainly uh, differentiates you. I, 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 would, I would have trouble... It's not the Hawaiian shirt and the no. long hair and the... 
and the hat. Nothing like that. that. I think oh, it's it's the glasses. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. the glasses. He's right. I think Jim shaved too, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but not his face. <laughs> so, how did you come up with the blend? How how? Where did this come from? Oh. Uh, working with Oscar, and By I should mention Byron, too, is our master blender mm -hmm. in, our, in our factory. If, any, if anybody out there doesn't know who a master blender is, he's like the head chef at a restaurant. Yeah. He's the guy that comes up and knows all the different tobaccos and knows how to combine different tobaccos together. Uh, I know what I like to smoke. I don't know how to pick out different tobaccos to make a blend. Well, you're honest. Yeah. It's, it's amazing how many people we've interviewed sat here who I happen to know, and they talk about their blending abilities and stuff like that. And I'm thinking to myself, you were selling used cars ten years ago. Where, where, how did you become a master blender? I don't profess to be a, a master blender. I you mean, have a good taste, I yeah. will tell you that. Well, when Byron, when he's making a blend for me, he'll he'll make it for me. I'll tell him, I'll give him an idea what I want. He'll make it, and then we'll tweak it back and forth. I say, I like a little more of this or a little less of this. Uh, but I'm saying it in flavors, like yeah. maybe a little more nutty or a little. You know, I'm right. not doing it by what type of tobacco it is. And he makes it happen. Right. Speaking, Byron has actually made of, all of our blends. Of, speaking of blending, what can you share with us about the blend of this other than the wrapper, which he said is a, a jalapa? The filler is all uh, Honduran. There's a, and there's, Oscar doesn't want me talking about it, but I'm going to talk about it anyhow. Um, there's a special region in Honduras that grows tobacco that not a, hot, a lot of people have access to, and it's the Copan area of Honduras, hmm. uh, which is up in the higher north side of Honduras. Most More of the, the tobacco Copan. comes from yeah. most of the tobacco, tobacco comes from the Hamastron Valley, which is right next to our factory. Our factory is right next to Hamastron, but we get some of our filler from that Copan area, which gives our cigars a unique flavor. That's a cigar, cigars exclusive, yeah. cigar yeah. time TV exclusive. Yeah. You learn the formula. And all the filler on all four blends, filler and binder, are the same. It's only the wrapper that is different. Right. Cool. Well, you blended a pretty masterful cigar. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing. In a couple of short years, I mean, I know our stores do a nice job selling this cigar, and, and we just always want to point out, especially coming into the cold weather as we are, uh, these cigars are available at all ten Cigar Cigar stores, which are going by on your screen as we speak. But, since we don't have stores on every street corner of yeah. our viewing audience yeah. uh, yet, <laughs> we implore you to support your local brick-and-mortar retail store that provides you a venue to smoke in the cold weather. Uh, most have a decent selection of cigars. Uh, we hope they're carrying, you know, the Leaf by Oscar, and if they're not, maybe if you should go in there and ask for them, they will. So, it's important that you patronize your, your local tobacco merchant. Uh, One thing, you won't find this cigar online. It's only sold to yeah, brick and mortars. I, do not, and I mortar. do not sell it online. Uh, and if you call my shop and ask for it, I try to refer you to the closest shop yeah, in your area right. to buy yeah. it. Yeah. And actually, we're building a website right now, which should be up very, very shortly, that if you are somewhere in the country, it's going you put in your zip code, it's going to tell you the closest shop to you. Cool. Oh, good. Oh, that's, that's good. good. That's, good. What, that's good. what we want it to be. I, no, just, I, mean, I want to give everybody a cautionary note. You might look at a cigar like this on the shelf, well, this cigar, because there isn't anything like it, um, and think, well, that, that wrapped up thing in a, in a leaf is sort of a neat gimmick, and, and you might dismiss this as a gimmick, and you really shouldn't, because the cigar inside is a hell of a cigar. Well, let's face facts. Wrapping the cigar in tobacco is a lot more costly than just putting it in a cellophane sleeve. So a lot of love, care, and expense has gone in to making sure that when you get the cigar, it's been properly humidified and, and wrapped in tobacco like nobody else does. Mm -hmm. And I mean, just not thrown into a cellophane wrapper. So a lot of love and cost has gone into this to do this right. And can this you is protect, the right way. Can you protect that idea? Uh, I have a patent pending on it. To be honest, to the cigar world, my lawyer tells me it's probably not going to get approved because it's a there packaging. Were in the it's a past, packaging yeah. process. There were in the past cigars a lot of, in the old days. A lot of cigars, not for any or not for some of the reasons you described, but in the old days, some cigars were wrapped in tobacco. Usually, not individual ones. No, they were wrapped. Usually, yeah, ones. yeah, yeah. I've researched. I haven't seen anybody that's ever done a it single this way. cigar. No, not yeah. late. Not for sure. Not lately. So there you go. Paul, do you have some interesting tidbits about the fields of Honduras that uh, you could share with us? Well, I, I really I wanted to 
question you a little bit further about about the cigars and about your place. I, I understand that you now also have your own plantation. Or your well, own we farm. have a field that we lease. We yeah, we don't own the property, but we lease the we lease the field and we get the we get the full crop every year. We we grew our first crop. Uh, uh, it's probably about 18 months ago as we harvested our first crop. And that's in uh, Hamastron? That's, that's in Hamastron Valley. Uh, so the tobacco is, we haven't started making anything with it. We're, we're still going through the aging process with it. Uh, and we call our, our tobacco field the FFF field. Uh, <laughs> sure, most people can probably figure out what that means. Yeah. First what, what? and field are the... <laughs> first and the first word is field? First uh, freaking field. First, first freaking field. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure that's that's a little sure. nicer than the way you first described it. Yeah. Off air. I have a question. What's the difference between leasing the land and growing your own and just buying tobacco from somebody? Is there well, is that just a technical it. or? Well, yeah, but I guess I'm thinking kind of from a financial. I mean, is it very similar? We don't have a lot of money to go buy a field. But I, I no, not buying a field, but but leasing the land and growing your own stuff versus just going to somebody like Oliva and, and buying the tobacco. Well, you have more control over it. Yeah. Okay. You, have you have more, more control, control over it, but also, at least from my, my perspective, um, there is a tremendous amount of profit built into growing tobacco. Yeah. And when you buy your t all of your tobacco, you're basically paying for all that profit instead of being able to just put it directly into the cigar. So, so it's also more cost effective. Much more. Okay. I, I also find as we've talked about in previous shows, uh, some of the larger companies have a uh, heads up on the word consistency, because they're able to come with the same blend all the time, pretty much all the time. What I find remarkable is I've smoked a number of these over the last couple of years, especially the Maduro, which I personally like, and they taste the same. I mean, the consistency in the blend, which is probably one of the hardest things to do, the consistency in the blend is amazing in this cigar. I mean, I, I know every one I, I smoke is going to taste just like just like the last one. Which for a small manufacturer like Jim is, that's an achievement. That yeah. you know, we applaud you for sure. Well, that all goes back to shots. How small is that? Yeah, you know, eight hundred shots, pretty impressive. Yeah. All right, well, so I think all, it, oh, all the tobacco ahead. comes from Yamastra. No, 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 I mean, no, no, aside no. from the, no, the, we, the... We haven't even started using our tobacco. Well, we get some of our tobacco now from Hamastron, but the, our field, we haven't even started using that tobacco yet. You get some from Trojas out to the east? Uh, we get it from all over. Okay. <laughs> Do you anticipate? Uh, okay, but it yeah. is all tobacco. It is all tobacco. Okay. Now, the stuff from FFF, do you anticipate a new cigar from that or replacing... Something that's already in the filler and wrapping. We're trying. Cigar. We're hoping it'll replace some of the stuff that's in the filler okay. that we already have, or some of the tobaccos in the filler. Uh, but we got, you know, we got to see once it's aged yeah. and what it tastes like and what we can do with it, or sense. maybe we come up with a new brand. You, All right, you got to play once you find out what yeah. it tastes. Yeah, like. yeah, yeah. I think it's time to review. We'll review and put a number on it. Uh, Paul, you can start. Well, it it has stayed absolutely consistent up to this point. So I would say it's a very smooth, slightly, uh, nicely sweet, and very slightly spicy cigar. Um, I give it an 8.5. Okay. Mm, I am getting, on the retrohale, I am getting the spice you originally mentioned. Um, and you're, it's something you mentioned, you're right, we didn't say earlier, is it is, it's very, very smooth. Um, I'd give it a, somewhere between medium and full, I think. Mm -hmm. um, it's nutty, and it does. I still say it has a little bit of that uh, cocoa-ish coffee flavor. And are we signing a number right now? Are we gonna? You put a, you put a number on it. I, I'd, I'd give it a nine point five. Wow. I actually I, I I I tell this to people all the time. I think this is one of the the three best cigars when we started carrying it last year that I had last year. It's I, I think it's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. I, I hate agreeing with you. I really really do. <laughs> you do it a lot though. Yeah. Uh, it's because you get to go first. That's why. Go, go first then. Um, forget, forget what I just said. Scratch that. Go ahead, Rob. <laughs> I, I agree with everything Scott says. It has a very clean taste yeah. to it. it. It's very smooth. There's no aftertaste at all in this cigar. It's, it's very good. I get, I get the, I'm get, picking up the nutty taste, the, definitely the sweet taste. I still get the toasty taste to it. Uh, the retrohale, I'm getting a little bit of spice in it. Just a bit. Yeah, just a bit. A, hint, a very hint of spice. 
uh, especially and a little bit on the, on the front of my tongue. Mm -hmm. um, it's a great cigar. I, I and I agree with Scott. Nine point five. God help me. <laughs> he has. I love this cigar. <laughs> I make I make no bones about it. I love this cigar, and to allow for enough time to uh, discuss our events that are up. Oh yeah. Um, I'm going to be I'm going to be quick with my review. It, 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 to those of you who have watched over the years, you know I like uh, Maduros. I give it a 9.75. Nice. Wow. Uh, all right. And the only reason it's not a 10 is it's not $5. <laughs> <laughs> if I it was were, warned about that. If it were 5 or $6, it would be a 10. Yeah, it's, it's great. Scott, yeah. give us the... Uh, have all, as we normally do all uh, for the next two weeks, uh, it's buy any five of these in any of our stores, and we'll give you another one for free. And then we have events coming up this Thursday in Frazier from 12 to 3. And then we go to Ludwig's Corner from 5 to 8. And then on Friday, uh, we're in Horsham right here from 12 to 3. And then Colmar from 5 to 9. And then we've got events next week that we'll talk about next week. Uh, specials during the events are a little bit better. It's if you buy four, uh, you get one free. And if you buy ten, you get three free. Wow. Oh, and, and Jim is going to be at these events. Yeah. So yes. you'll, you'll, you'll get to meet Jim himself. And you'll be able to get autographs, pictures taken. Maybe even wear the famous yellow clay. <laughs> but now you told me they were only four dollars a piece. Yeah, yeah. It kind of takes. takes it. You anyway. took some of the. Yeah. <laughs> well, we come to an end of another show, and we conclude our second year of these broadcasts every week. Yeah, two years. Two years. Wow. We could have no better guest than Jim on the show. And, and, Absolutely. And Thank you. We just yeah, no better cigar. We're very pleased yeah. to bring you these shows. We hope you're enjoying them as much as we enjoy bringing them to you. Without further ado, I wish you all a good night. Again, we thank you for your business. Jim, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Ciao for now, everybody. Smoke sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to you. Wahoo. Wahoo. <laughs> We're good. That's a wrap. Check the gate. Check the gate. Check the gate. Smoke sweet. You got, you know, how long have you been waiting to do that? Yeah, I, I swear yeah, to it, it just caught one. Yeah, you did great, yeah. 45 yeah. seconds? Oh my god. I thought I just thought of it at the end. Wow, that is bright without those sunglasses. <laughs> I know, right? I wear my sunglasses. This is Glenn Loop, Executive Director at Cigar Rights of America, a grassroots movement designed in, in existence to defend your ability to enjoy premium handmade cigars. Well, like no other time in history, this passion of ours is under attack. It's under attack in your city hall, in your state capitol, and in the halls of Congress of Washington, D.C. Right now, the Food and Drug Administration is proposing to regulate this passion that we all share like never before in history. 241 pages of regulations designed to cripple this industry. From your ability as a consumer to enjoy a free sample, to being able to go into your local brick and mortar and enjoy cigars and camaraderie with your friends, or even to enjoy a major cigar event across this land, all would come under threat. All would come under threat with these regulations. Go to CigarRights.org. Join today. Join this grassroots movement. Be a part of the process. Become a cigar voter. Thank you.